Esther bought a new, really beautiful uh, covering. She planned to wear today. Tracy helped her pick it. It was really beautiful. It had the ruffles she likes and some sparkles. It was mostly black. And as she took it out of the closet to put it in the suitcase, she was pretty sure she heard Jerry say, Did someone die? <laughs> she put the blouse on he liked the most <laughs> and, and here you are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fantastic well that was <laughs> little did you know the vibrational match you were to that <laughs> More, more of that causation stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, that's a leading, uh, a wonderful lead into my first question, which is why, well, you just said with the last hot seater that this, in the deepest, deepest sense, is the leading edge. Why did Jerry leave now, and how is it perfect, his and our, for, perfect for his and our greater expansion and joy? Because there is very little separation between the physical part of the leading edge and the non-physical part of the leading edge. That's really the point that we're wanting to make yeah. with all of this. In other yeah. words, we are all so mm. in this together that it makes little difference. Mm. And humans are really hung up on this death thing. In other words, most of you are so, so worried about death that you don't really live. Yeah. It's time for a bridge. Yeah. It's time for a bridge. A bridge. A bridge. That's interesting. Can you say more on that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, you, you, you brought figure, it. Figure it out. <laughs> We're really sort of tired of you leaving all the answers to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's great. Well, in the sense that, and you've heard us say this many times, <laughs> that whenever someone makes their tra transition into non-physical, yeah. there is always more asking, more interest in the interaction. And Esther has had wonderful interaction with that which is Abraham, but she's been wondering, and many of you have too, in other words, what, what is it like to reemerge into non-physical? Yeah. What's, it, what's it really like? And yeah. so... Over the weeks and months and years, there will be much more definition of that coming, nice. just because there is much more question about that coming. But the, the most important thing is that none of you have come forth to be in these physical bodies forever. Yeah. You, you've come to let life inspire you, and sometimes you reach the place where the non-physical clarity is the greater inspiration. In other words, when your questions have been answered, when your life experience is full, oh. because you never stop reaching for that which is more, you say. It's well, on that then, the, the non-physical, the words you just Not, used? This is the thing that we want you to hear, and this speaks it more than anything okay. ever, 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 because you all know the intensity of the desire of the one that you know as Jerry. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you accept that, that inquisitiveness is not gone because he's reemerged into non-physical, yeah. that interest in life is not waning but actually inflamed, uh, yeah. In other words, it, it's that sort of bridge. It's to help you to understand. Because as much as we stand here as the, exactly the same representation of non-physical energy, you still think we're dead. Yeah, I hear you. you yeah. And you still think we're different than that which you are. Right. Uh, humans have a hard time accepting that when, when source is flowing, that it flows through the physical extensions of all that you are. Right. And that there is not a separation. And so it, it will be a personal discovery for Esther, certainly has already become one for Jerry, mm. and for, for any who are wanting to take the trail mm. along. Esther was sitting and editing the Twice Monthly, sitting at the kitchen counter in uh, San Antonio. And her sister was there, and, and Becky said, look behind you, and there was a bird, mm. a big bird, <laughs> Not a hummingbird, a big bird, <laughs> acting like a hummingbird, <laughs> hovering, 
hovering right outside the window, looking right over Esther's shoulder, hovering over, hovering, hovering. Birds don't do that. It is aerodynamically yeah. incorrect. It is incorrect. You don't, you don't get in a little corner as a bird and just hover ordinarily yeah. unless you have been inspired by non-physical consciousness to take a peek at something you're interested yeah. in seeing you nice. see. so there are all kinds of those experiences that will help all of you to realize that there is no separation between what you call non-physical and what you call physical nice and and in this process perhaps there will be a little diminishment of the dread uh, factor yeah wonderful the dread yeah, factor right, right. of of something that is non-existent. You might as well get over it. Do you know anyone who will not die? Right. You don't. You don't know anyone. 100% of you, 100% of you stand in resistance to something that is absolutely inevitable. It's time right. to get over the death. Woo! Yeah. It's Woo! time to get over it. It's time to get over it. It's time to nice. feel the fullness of who you are. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I wasn't actually, this wasn't one of the questions, but it was something that was in the back of my head. And since we're in a unique environment here, and since there is no separation, you've done such a fantastic job at times with certain people, certain environments, to hear from that other side. I have been wondering, now or going forward, could we hear from Jerry? As oh, you you'll hear a lot from Jerry. You'll hear a lot from him. When, uh, when we looked around the room and said, you look good, that was Jerry. Oh, nice. Uh, fantastic. Because we've never thought you looked particularly good. Yeah, that, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was. That's fantastic. Yeah. That was a new line. I was surprised at that. That was fantastic. I'm like, oh, that's... Oh, okay. And those of you who have been hanging around, you'll recognize yeah. Jerry's input. And, it, and in some cases, it will be hard to separate it because he's been hanging around with us, as have you, uh, while physically focused, but it will be evident. Wonderful. Well, on the top and at times obnoxious and annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's fantastic um, on that metaphor of the bridge. Because I'll, he is no. that sort of bridge. In other words, oh. we, we have been non-physically focused, and the, you, you have to understand that everything that we are... We're going to enjoy this. So, Esther, in her alignment and over time don't read your notes listen okay, to us okay all right <laughs> that was jerry what that was jerry <laughs> hi hi he wants to say <laughs> <laughs> Esther, in her alignment, has managed, and in her uh, meditation through years, has managed to focus us into a beingness that is evident to you. Well, the same thing happens when you are born into your physical body. You focus consciousness into a beingness. And we want you to feel that. It's focusing consciousness into a beingness. Now, it's easy for you to acknowledge that because as we were saying earlier, there you sit in those clumps. Irreverent, aren't we? <laughs> there you are in those clumps, those individual personalities. But when you interact with each other, your attention, your expectation in the attitude of causation that we were talking about earlier where there is a collaboration or a collective coming together, you literally focus personalities from those people that you interact with. Mm -hmm. You see it in children. Mm -hmm. They behave differently with that person mm -hmm. than that person. Mm -hmm. So there is a focusing of consciousness. Now, most humans don't want to even consider that. You want to give complete causation to the kid who spilled the milk or complete mm -hmm. causation to whatever the personality is in that person. You shouldn't act like that. When we would like to say there is a group dynamic going on here mm -hmm. that is causing that behavior to be focused or summoned mm -hmm. or exuded mm -hmm. or extracted or attracted. In other words, mm -hmm. that, that's going on all the time. And so now there's this non-physical consciousness, this non-physical collective consciousness, this infinite intelligence, which you all focus into being. Jerry got this ball rolling in a very powerful way because he had lived so much life and had so many questions. Mm. And when he began to interact with what he knew to be infinite intelligence, 
that his life had focused so mm-hmm. much of it into being mm-hmm. you see and so the questions began flowing mm-hmm. esther said she was glad to see you here and she was glad to see you here mm-hmm. because as she was looking because she acknowledges that there are many who will continue that that summoning of consciousness in the way that Jerry got it started. Mm. And it is so much more yeah. global now because now we've laid this baseline. People understand that, as Seth said, who got it started even before, mm-hmm. you create your own reality. And Jerry said, if that is so, how is it so? Mm-hmm. Seth said, your point of power is in the now. And Jerry said, if that is so, how is that so? And so we've spent the last 26 years answering that question for Jerry and others. That's a question that we really want to talk about here today Mm. and you are bringing it right out to the leading edge again because Mm. it's the focusing of consciousness forward, you see. Mm -hmm. So you want to feel a certain amount of responsibility for what you're extracting from your grandchildren or from your children or from your government. Take some of the credit for what you are extracting Mm -hmm. from your government. Mm -hmm. In your criticism of Mm -hmm. them, you get more of it. In Mm -hmm. your appreciation of it, you get more of it. In your attention to anything, you get more of it. Mm -hmm. So now, here is Esther. She's been focusing us into being with the help of Jerry only in the beginning and many like you as it began to evolve. And so now, now here is this consciousness known as Abraham and you have a level of expectation about what it is. You know we're infinite intelligence or at least you think we are. We are. <laughs> In the sense that we have access to any thought that you activate enough to bring into focus. In other words, you are the creation mm-hmm. of what goes on here. Mm-hmm. The collective consciousness and expectation of that which you are is what summons this. So you all have a sort of attitude or expectation of what the non physical is. Well, Jerry's introduction or re emergence into it adds a different dynamic, at least for Esther. Because Esther doesn't want Jerry to be Abraham. She's already got right, Abraham, right. you see. Right. She wants his mm. unique introduction mm-hmm. to it. Well, what's going to make that? What's going to make, what's going to cause Esther to feel? Is Jerry going to assert himself into no, this No, we mix? have to keep it alive, the essence? No, it isn't that way at all. You don't have okay. to. You can't help well, it. But, but it, is Jerry or Abraham, are we going to assert no. our knowledge into a forum like this or is your expectation is your wondering mm-hmm. is your inquiry are you the ones that focus that into being you see and so you, and that's unsettling that's unsettling a bit to someone like Esther <sighs> waiting for the unsettling to leave Hmm. But when she remembers what law of attraction is and she remembers what the power of focus is, so now that's that bridge we were talking about. She has that unique perspective that summons specifically. That's that bridge. And we're part of that summoning and how? Yeah. Well, we would suggest that you just get on with what you're getting on with. In other words, be who you are. Let your life experience... In other words, there is no obligation ever. Mm -hmm. No obligation. First of all, you can't separate physical from non-physical. And there's too much of an integration. There will never be... It is not possible to ever separate that. But what's unsettling about what just transpired there? I don't... If if she knows, we know, and we're in essence, it it seems like creating a a Practice vibration. It's what we were talking about at the very first question. Practice vibration. It is normal There is no separation. There is no separation, but humans have practiced the feeling of it. And so certain things trigger the feeling of separation, and when the feeling of separation is there, then separation is experienced. So, it's, it really so, is simple as that. So actually communicating even to Esther, um, his partner, and so forth, is actually an totally appropriate thing, even though it may be unsettling. It's still to continue that drawing and that recollecting. I and mean, what are you meaning by the summoning and, and it's unsettling to hear about Jerry? I didn't understand what that meant. Oh, only unsettling for Esther at some times, in other words, because of the feeling of loss. Okay, got it. All right. Well, speaking of... Which is bogus. Yeah. But, but totally fine. Normal. Um, no, yeah. 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 But uh, out of the vortex. Yeah. Right. And unnecessary. There we go. Yes. So most people, when they're speaking of accountability, they're saying to another, your behavior 
and more important, my attention to your behavior, has taken me out of the vortex into a horrible feeling place. And you need to do something different so that I can feel better. Esther said that to Jerry for a few days after he made his transition. She was so <laughs> mad at him. She was just so mad at him because he was missing. And she just thought that was ridiculous. She just couldn't come to terms with it. And then after a few days of realizing that, what was she really asking him to do? Undo that. <laughs> and so she realized there must be another way. There must be another way. And we want you all to know that there is always another way and it's an easy, 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 easy way. It's finally not making somebody else accountable for how you feel. Isn't that the ultimate? Damn it, Jerry, you're dead and I feel bad. Do something about it. Become undead. Well, of course, there is no dead, but it took her a while to remember that and to find it again, you see. It has been said that um, there's much more of a shock and recognition of birth than it is at death. We say it often and we mean it. It takes you a little while to get refocused into your physical body right. and to regain your footing. But in the re-emerging into the non-physical experience, you take all that you are and you stand from that leading edge place and you revel in everything that you see and you have the ability to see everything. The subject of physical death is something that is so misunderstood by humans that we were talking earlier and we really liked the conversation about uh, how can something that feels so wrong actually be right. Esther experienced this in a very strong way as Jerry made his transition because it felt wrong to her. It felt wrong on every level that she could approach it. It felt like bad timing. It felt inappropriate. It was not what she wanted. It wasn't what she was writing about or thinking about. It wasn't what she wanted. And for a while, the wrongness of it was just sucking the life out of her. And then one day, she stumbled, it felt like stumbling, because it wasn't a thought she went looking for, but it was a thought that in her weariness, there was enough resistance in her weariness that she was able to find it. And the thought was, what if this isn't wrong, but what if it is right? What if, what if it is only right? And then all of the exhilaration that she'd been missing came back. All of the feelings of clarity that she'd been missing came back. And there is something... It's such an interesting thing as humans. You, you're all here interacting together with so many lists of so many things that you've decided are wrong that you hold yourself in resistance to all of the things that are right. And, and the thing that's so really interesting about that is that you wouldn't know the rightness if you didn't know the wrongness. In other words, if you didn't know what you don't prefer, you would not know what you do prefer. It really requires stepping back into a broader perspective in order to understand not just the rightness but the perfection of this ongoing consciousness that is you. In other words, the opportunities to keep changing perspective, the opportunities to stand in another new place, the opportunities to look from a different vantage point, the opportunity to explore. In other words, that's what you are doing as you come into this physical experience. You are non-physical energy coming to a different vantage point. And when you re-emerge into non-physical, it is equally exhilarating to then view it from another vantage point. And the thing that is tripping most physical beings up is that you think that the physical vantage point is where physical beings all come and just think about the physical. We're about to tell you something profound that you will always want to remember. You think that as you come into physical form, that you come with the intention of being physical and thinking about things that are physical. And then you incorrectly assume that when you are non-physical, that you are thinking about non-physical things. Right. When what you are always thinking about, whether you are non-physically focused or physically focused, is what's out here on this physical leading edge of thought. So when you look at it that way, just take Jerry, for example, and this body of work that we are about, or even Esther as he has been approaching Esther through all of this time. Imagine what it was like for him 
to be physically focused and involved in all of this, setting up the meetings, getting the meeting rooms the way he liked them, posing the questions, putting it into an environment where it was perfect for you, wanting to make it conducive for you to come and ask whatever question that you wanted. In other words, as people would say, oh, you should do more of this or this or this, Jerry always said every single time, our work, what we want, meaning Esther and Jerry and Abraham, is to provide an opportunity for brilliant people to come forward with the basis of life that they've lived and present their point of view in this leading edge environment to take thought beyond that which it has been before. We trust that law of attraction will gather up those who are ready for that. Our work is not the promotion of it. Our work is the creation of the work, you see. So imagine the fulfillment and satisfaction that he had as he was... The, the beginning asking and, and essential to the process of that evolution. Now imagine what it must be like for him. We're asking you to, to contemplate it from a joy level. Imagine what it must be like for him now to shift that point of consciousness and see it from the non-physical point of view. In other words, it was the next logical step for him. But you would have to understand the intensity of his desire in order to get it, you see. Hard thing to understand that anyone would prefer that to this. Ah, but the non-physical point of view is really, really good. Thank you. Um, I have one other thing. When I found out that Jerry made his transition, it was... Um, because I was reading uh, an email that Esther sent out. So it was a, you know, a few days or so after that happened. So I hadn't heard about it until then. And when I heard about it, this really, you know, when I was reading it, this really beautiful feeling of joy overcame me. I knew I was in a really good place um, and with understanding everything that you have um, been teaching us because that feeling of joy overcame me more than anything else. And right at that moment, I was about halfway through that, and I was recognizing that feeling, and I looked up at the clock, and it was 5.55. And that I was knew, Jerry. That was Jerry. So Jerry. And then... His favorite thing. Yeah. 333-444-555. Esther begged him to stop waking her and telling her. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kristen will be really um, pleased to hear that I haven't done that to her, because two mornings after that, I woke up, and it was 5.55. The second time I woke up and it was 5.54, so I sat there and I watched it turn 5.55. That was also Jerry. Yeah. And I, and I smiled with Jerry right then. That was great. So this is, um, I just want to say one more thing, and this is for Esther, for when she's playing the workshop back. Um, I just wanted to tell her that I understand her and Jerry's connection to the source energy within her and Jerry and the quest for alignment with themselves as individuals first and foremost is why they have what I have come to know as one of the most joyful relationships I have ever witnessed. And it is in the knowing of some of the details of their relationship through stories that you have shared with us um, or on spending time with them on cruises with stories they have shared with us that um, I have been inspired and influenced into allowing that for myself and having that with my partner. And that has been the golden nugget for me in all of this. And as much as Esther feels that she is most alive in these type of forms, so do we. And I am looking forward to the more that is coming and appreciate the time and the energy focus here for the expansion. Thank you so much, we love you.